Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. Today, we'll talk about what to do with an unwanted or broken suitcase or backpack. We'll explore luggage made from recycled materials. And to finish, I'll share stories about artists who incorporate luggage into their work. So what can you do with suitcases or backpacks in excellent condition? I recommend donating them to an organization that helps children in foster care. It is unfortunately still common for these children to carry their items in a plastic bag when they move from home to home. Many organizations put together care packages in backpacks or suitcases that are in good condition. In the Washington, D.C. area where I live, we have Comfort Cases, which was started by a dad who grew up in foster care and then adopted kids from foster care. Comfort Cases encourages people to have packing parties where you load backpacks with toiletries and a small blanket, as well as other small gifts. This is a great service project for scouts. I recommend that you check out a video about Comfort Cases in the show notes with this episode. Episode. So if your suitcase is not in great condition, let's talk about what you can do with broken suitcases. If it is a vintage, hard-sided suitcase, these are currently very popular to make into side tables, dresser drawers, or cabinets. To make shelves, sometimes people cut them in half. Here are five of my favorite projects made with vintage suitcases. The first is an art supply storage case. People put pockets and dividers in the suitcase to keep things organized and ready to travel for their next art class or maybe for a plein air or outdoor painting session. I also admire doll houses made out of vintage suitcases. In the last episode of this podcast, I talked about making doll house furniture and accessories from recycled materials. Of course, you can make the actual doll house from recycled materials as well. This is a great way to use up wallpaper or fabric scraps. Another use for vintage suitcases are pet bed or cat tree. I was impressed when I saw someone made a cat bunk bed for a multi-cat home, and I also saw another situation where people took a series of platforms made from suitcases to build a cat climbing structure. A display case in a store or a craft show is a great way to show merchandise in a vintage suitcase. And having just done a few craft shows myself, this would be a great way to carry my crafts from my car into the show. Finally, I was impressed to see that some folks had transformed a vintage suitcase into a picnic table. Not a full-sized one, but one that goes down on the ground on your picnic blanket. And I saw one project where they actually embedded speakers into the suitcase so that they could have music during their picnic. There is actually a company called Loud Luggage that transforms suitcases into speakers. I made a Pinterest board of ideas to creatively reuse suitcases, and it includes instructions to projects on things such as how to replace a lining of a suitcase, or how to decoupage a new design on the outside, or how to add legs to make it into a table. Even if you do not like to make things yourselves, I'm sure many local crafters would love to upcycle your vintage suitcases. Now, let's say your suitcase is not a vintage hard-sided one, but a more modern, soft-sided suitcase. You could still use it to make a pet bed. I have used my suitcases that are not in great condition to store my winter clothes in the summer and summer clothes in the winter in order to reduce my closet clutter. I have also used them to store sentimental items like my husband's hockey jerseys from when he was a kid or framed family photos that are just not in rotation right now. If you don't have a home emergency kit, this is a great use for a suitcase that doesn't have to be in perfect shape. Maybe this could be one of your 2018 family goals. If your luggage is really in terrible shape and you really need to get it out of your house, I recommend sending it to TerraCycle. It has a zero waste box for luggage. You can fit more in the box if you take apart your luggage first. So for tips on that, I recommend checking out my podcast episode on take apart events, which I will link to in the show notes. So moving on from suitcases to backpacks. 
Today, most backpacks have an internal frame, but when I was growing up, many backpacks had an external metal frame where you could attach your sleeping bag or other items. I looked at what you could do with that kind of backpack. And in fact, I found there's a whole market, a kind of a nostalgic market, because they are great for things that these internal frame backpacks are not very good at doing. So for example, I learned about people who work on trail crews and the external frame backpack Backpacks are better for carrying lumber, chainsaws, or other large tools when you're going out on the trail. Some styles of these backpacks are actually considered to be collectibles. So don't toss your pack just because it's not what most people are using today. My son's Boy Scout troop encourages the scouts to borrow packs while they are still growing. This lets them try out many brands of packs and also save money until they have stopped growing. They have a collection of donated packs. If you have an unused backpack, whether that's an internal or external frame backpack, you could donate it to the scouts in your area or to other community hiking groups such as Sierra Club's Inner City Outings Program. Finally, I saw a really creative use of an external shell backpack at the Smithsonian Folklife Festival last year. A group called Wise Fool New Mexico was teaching how to make giant puppets that you wear on your back. They started by making these puppets uh, originally as a part of political street theater. The head of the puppet was carved from clay and then overlaid with papier-mâché. Once that dried, the mask would be removed and painted. The clay could then be reformed into a new shape for a new mask. The painted mask was attached to a tall pole with a horizontal piece to form the puppet's shoulders. Fabric then formed the body of the puppet. I learned that there is an organization called Clowns Without Borders that brings comedic performers to places like refugee camps or places that have experienced natural disasters. And I heard from this group that having external shell backpacks as a was just a great resource in order to make more of these very tall puppets. So let's say you're thinking about getting some new luggage I think there are some great options that are made from recycled materials. So when you're making that financial investment, the first priority would be to buy something long lasting. And there are some luggage companies that come with a lifetime warranty, such as the company Timbuktu. You can also purchase luggage that is made from recycled materials. So for example, there are now quite a few brands where the fabric of the luggage is made from recycled plastic bottles. And I'll link to a bunch of companies all over the world that do this. Next, I'm going to talk about some luggage that is made from, I think, some pretty creative materials. I'm going to talk about luggage made from leather airplane and car seats, uniforms, vinyl billboards, plastic feed bags, rubber inner tubes, truck tarpaulins, denim jeans, and seat belts. If you like leather luggage, you will find many craftspeople make backpacks from recycled leather coats or couches. If you search for recycled leather backpack on Etsy, you will get lots of options. If you want some fancy brand name leather, check out a Canadian company named Mari Claro, which makes luggage from the leather seats of high-end cars, including brands such as Audi, BMW, Jaguar, and Porsche. You can also get leather bags made from leather airline seats. Delta Airlines partners with a company called Sky Bags to transform their old leather seats into bags. Southwest Airlines and Alaska Airlines work with a company called Loopty Works, as well as organizations in Africa to make shoes and soccer balls. Another airline which recycles items into luggage is JetBlue. They send their uniforms to be made into messenger bags through a company called Manhattan Portage. If you want colorful luggage, I recommend luggage made from vinyl billboards. Vinyl billboards can be featured for as little as four weeks and they create a lot of waste. The best known company that makes bags from vinyl billboards is Rare Form, and they were featured on the TV show Shark Tank in March 2017, which increased their reach considerably. 
They gather thousands of pounds of billboards per month. Their Instagram currently says it's about 20,000 pounds. They make many items, from wallets to duffel bags, as well as bags to carry surfboards. In Colorado, I visited a company called Ecologic Designs, which sews messenger bags from vinyl billboards and inner tubes. They also make items from wetsuits and climbing ropes. I am a big fan of things made from inner tubes, and I plan on doing a whole podcast episode about that soon. So for now, I'll just mention one other company that makes luggage from inner tubes, which is Tube Bags, a company in Thailand. In addition to vinyl billboards, other sources of plastic sheeting can be recycled into luggage. For example, a company called Torain makes backpacks and messenger bags from plastic feed bags. A company called M24 Bags makes bags from truck tarpaulins in the UK. Many artisans make backpacks from denim jeans because it is such a hardy material. I like the ones by a company called Upcycled in the Netherlands because the bottoms of her bags are often made from the leather of old couches with denim patchwork up the sides. My favorite creative reuse idea for luggage are those made from recycled seat belts. I'm a fan of salvage goods. I will share a video of Clay, who makes salvage goods, where he's climbing into cars in a junkyard to cut out the seat belts. He has a huge collection of belts which he matches by make of car in order to get enough of the same color. The first time he used a seat belt in order to make luggage was to fix a broken backpack latch, but that was only the beginning. If you'd like to make your own luggage from recycled materials, I have two project ideas. The first is a t-shirt drawstring backpack. This is a great activity to teach basic machine sewing. And there are many tutorials on the web, but my favorite ones include pounding in grommets or circular metal pieces for the string to pull through. Learning how to install a grommet is a very satisfying and easy upcycling skill. The second project idea is one that I just did myself. I had two backpacks from my honeymoon and they were getting kind of in rough shape. It had been 20 years and the insides were starting to flake. However, the outsides of the bags were in great shape. I removed all the straps and hardware. I sewed a new bag from upholstery straps. I wanted an extra tall backpack to carry my drumsticks because my new drumsticks were too long for my regular backpack. I attached the straps from my old backpacks. So even if you can reuse part of your luggage in a creative reuse project, that's a pretty cool option. Finally, I like to finish each episode with info about artists who incorporate the item that we're discussing into their art. And there are actually a lot of artists who incorporate luggage into their work. And here are some of my favorites. American artist Gabriel Deshaw cuts apart Louis Vuitton suitcases and makes them into sculptures, often from Star Wars and Avengers, including Iron Man, Darth Vader, Kylo Ren, C-3PO, and a Stormtrooper. Chinese artist Yin Ziyu Chen has a series of pieces named Portable Cities. She makes secondhand clothing into famous global landmarks, and then she makes tiny cityscapes inside the suitcases with her secondhand clothing landmarks. Polish artist Paul Althammer did a sculpture called Self-Portrait in a Suitcase, which shows an open suitcase with a miniature person sitting in it beside a sink and a shelf. It looks kind of like a grungy apartment. This could be a great project for an art class where students do a self-portrait that is three-dimensional but contained in a suitcase. Cuban artist Joan Capote filled a suitcase with bricks after a trip to New York. The bricks represented the weight we carry and the barriers we face. Japanese artist Chiharu Chiyota did a few installations that involved a large number of suitcases, one where they were suspended from red ropes and another where they were stacked high and filled with family photos. Chiharu says her work is about the memory in absent things, and that's an interesting way to view luggage. It's an object that holds items that someone has valued. Someone thought it was worth carrying these items from one place to another. I have noticed that increased baggage fees causes us all to reevaluate what is necessary to bring on a trip. 
In a way, that's related to the mission of trash imagination, which is to be intentional about what we carry with us in life. Until next time, may you see trash as a source of art in your life. (laughs) 